How's it going guys? In today's lesson, we're going to be going over how we can create a swipeable view in Swift UI. And it's going to look like this. So we have an app and you can see some bubbles down here. And you can just swipe from one side to the other in case you have different screens you want to show or different views you want to show. We can just swipe it and it's going to update on the indicator down below. And it's not necessary that you include an indicator but just so that you can create this, I will show you all the necessary steps to customize it. So the first thing you want to do is create a new project in Xcode and we can minimize the sidebars and click on iPhone 13. Then we'll go ahead and click on resume just to make sure that the program is functioning correctly. Now, the first thing we should do is go ahead and create a private array of callers. And this is just going to hold several callers that you want to include in the view. And of course you can change this out with your own views, but I'm just going to be using the colors for this example. So red, dot blue, dot green, dot orange, and dot black. And before we continue, I actually forgot that we need to specify what type colors is. So here we can go ahead and say it's of type color. Next, we can go inside the body and replace this with a V stack. And inside the VStack, we need to insert a tab view. Inside the tab view, we're going to create a for each loop. So for each of the callers. So we're going to show each of the callers, which will have an ID of backslash dot self because each caller is unique. And we just want to show each caller. So we'll type in caller in. And inside here, we go ahead and create a Z stack because we want to use the caller as the background because once again, the caller is a view, so we can just use it as it is. And below that, we'll go ahead and add a text, which will be backslash caller dot description. So we get the caller name. Then we'll give it a font of dot title and a foreground caller of dot white. So now if we go ahead and live preview this, we'll just have a tab view and we can't do anything yet because we haven't specified the functionality required to actually swipe. So let's go ahead and get started with that. Now to actually make a tab view swipeable, all you have to do is go to your tab view and type in dot tab view style and specify that it is a dot page. With that being done, you're going to get the indicators at the bottom automatically, and you're also going to be able to swipe around. Now let's go ahead and customize the dots. So here we can go ahead and type in index view style and we just have to type in dot page and the background display mode, which can be set to interactive, always or automatic. If we go ahead and select interactive, it's going to highlight the bar when we tap on it and we can drag it to the page we want. Otherwise, we can also tap to the side of the bar as we please. And this is a very native feeling that you usually get in the home page of an iPhone. So it's just very nice that you can just go right and left, but we can also decide to never display a background so now if we actually go ahead and click on the indicators, we can drag it, but we'll never have a background. And you might be wondering, what if you don't want to display these small circles? Well, inside the tab view style, you can go ahead and get rid of the dot page and type in dot page index display mode. And this will give you the option to show it either automatically, never, or always. If you type in dot never, it removes the dots entirely. So you don't have to worry about looking at those. You can just swipe as a normal view. But in this case, I really like them. So I'm going to remove that and leave them inside the app. Now, of course, those were the basics of how to use it. You can always go ahead and customize it the way you want. Give it a corner radius and include a padding maybe of 10 and you're going to get some nice effects and you can still swipe it and it looks great. And it's actually that simple with SwiftUI. So with that being said, as always guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.